What is up everyone? Welcome to Hi-Fi Turtle, the number one reptile adjacent Hi-Fi page on the internet, bringing the audio file out of their shell. Today I have a very special product and that is the Galleon TSA-75. This is a product by Galleon Audio who was started by fellow YouTuber and my personal favorite reviewer, Thomas and Stereo. The amplifier was sent to me by Galleon Audio for this review, and when Thomas reached out to me at first, he was a bit apprehensive for me to get this unit. And the reason wasn't because Thomas is hiding something and he doesn't think this unit's all that great, or me and Thomas have beef. I'm hoping that if me and Thomas do have beef, it's only gonna be gyutan, it's not gonna be actual fighting beef. But the reason Thomas told me he was a bit apprehensive at first to reach out was because he thought that I had ascended to this upper echelon of audio file and that since I have you know the Dyn Audio Confidence 50s and all this other great equipment that I had ascended beyond his products level and sending the TSA75 which is a $1500 amplifier would be too low or maybe perceived as too low of quality for a system of this kind of grand expense. But I told Thomas that I definitely was interested in checking it out and having positively reviewed his TS120SE, I was definitely excited to see what he could do in the solid state world and that of a, again, a $1,500 power amplifier. And I have to say, after listening for a long time to this amplifier, I like it a lot, but I do have some beef with this amplifier. So strap in, get your shin ramen, make sure it's the spicy variety because it's about to get spicy in here. Before we continue, make sure you like this video, subscribe, it helps the channel grow so we can continue to bring you high quality content like this. Check the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel and let's get back into it. As I said, the Galleon TSA75 is a power amplifier, $1,500. It puts 75 watts into eight ohms and 100 watts into four ohms, thus the name a75, TS being for Thomas and Stereo. This is a fairly utilitarian design. It's not overtly flashy, but for $1,500, it doesn't have to be. It has some nice design features like the embossed logo on the front, the galleon symbol, and the name itself. It does have the A75 in the upper right-hand corner, which I feel like is uh, my first kind of uh, with this amplifier because the A75, the TSA75, it looks compressed. It is the same font as the normal Galleon logo, but it looks like it was just squeezed a little bit and kind of looks a little odd and out of place on that. I kind of wish that that was just on the back of the amplifier and not on the faceplate, especially because it is in this white colored font versus embossed like the logo and the name. The second piece of the front plate is the on off button and it has this nice click to it. It does glow blue, which I hate those blue LEDs, but it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. And being low to the ground, it didn't annoy me too much. But the on off text as well on this, the on off is a different text or different font than the rest of the fonts on the amplifier. And it's just there and presented in a way that I feel like, why? Why is it there? Take it away. I, I realize this button has to be the on and off. Turning to the back of the amplifier, there is a selector for both single-ended and balanced inputs, and then we have our binding posts, which have a nice amount of space between them, so you can definitely fit on those larger speaker cables if you do have those. I didn't mind the push button style selectors for the single-ended or balanced, although I have to say that the movement amount from the position being selected for single-ended versus balanced is not super duper obvious. You do have to play around with it and look at which one is lower than the other. I wish that this was just a selector switch and we could switch up for single-ended or down for balanced or vice versa, whatever, that it would be more obvious. So I'm not a fan of this design for the selection, but once you set it, you kind of forget it. So I won't take off too many points for that. Pop in the hood on the amplifier. This is where it gets really, really good and really, really juicy. This thing is built so incredibly well for a $1,500 power amp. You don't just have a single toroidal transformer, you have two matched toroidal transformers and then a true dual mono setup. This amplifier is really two in a singular chassis. There is a wholly separate amplifier input and output section for 
each individual channel. Again, you have the two toroidal transformers and you have audio grade components in here. I see a lot of WEMA capacitors. I see the ELNAs, the audio grade ELNAs at that. There are a few from Nippon ChemCon, but this is all very high quality parts that are being selected in this amplifier that is not all that expensive in the grand scope of things. I really do like the Galleon logo and name on the top of the Turtle Transformer. I think this looks really cool. And Thomas, I know you're gonna watch this. Make this into a cup coaster. Make that design into a cup coaster because that, that is really cool. I'd love to have a Galleon cup coaster in that exact design that's on top of the Troidal Transformer. The layout is really clean, very simple. The cable management looks outstanding. It really is something that looks very well pieced together, very well selected in the parts quality and the layout. And again, to find this level of detail in that two amplifiers in one chassis kind of design at this price point is very, very rare to see. Now, I know some of you out there may be thinking, 75 watts in the eight ohms, why, why so low for two toroidal transformers and all these transistors and all these great components and all these capacitors, why don't we get more? I don't know why that is, but I can tell you this, 75 watts into eight ohms is more than enough for 99.9999% of speakers out there. And I would venture almost to say 100% of speakers, depending on how tolerant you are to 120 decibels. But another interesting design point here is there are 100,000 microfarads of filtering in each channel. That's right, 200,000 microfarads for this amplifier. My SPL M1000 monoblocks have the same amount of power filtering and they're putting out a thousand watts into two ohms. So for Thomas's amplifier to put, have that much capacitance in to 75 watts into eight ohms, that's a ton of power reserve. And I think that is also the key and the secret into getting more sound and more volume out of what seemingly would be a moderately powered amplifier. Let's close the lid on the design here. I have one very big piece of beef that I have not chewed off quite yet. And that is the logo of the Galleon. Now, it might be thinking, what is it? Do I not like it? Do I think it's too close to Corsair? What's going on? <laughs> the embossing on the front is awesome. The logo on the top, again, it's that white uh, text. It's just a, a vinyl. It's fine. The finish of the amp, this brushed aluminum, looks fantastic, looks great. I don't know why this is, but the galleon, the, the, the mast from the, the ship, that's you know the, the logo design, it doesn't sit perfectly center on both of these spots on the amplifier. Now, interestingly enough, internally on the toroidal transformer, the mast flag sits perfectly center. That's awesome, that's perfectly okay. You're never gonna see that though because we have to take the top off of the amplifier in order to see that. The top of the amplifier is gonna be on 99.9% .9 of the time unless you're a reviewer like me who's gonna take the top off for all y'all to see. Now, it's not perfectly centered and even going to Thomas's website, I see that for some reason in the embossing and the printing on this amplifier, the mass flag is extending just ever so slightly to the left to where it's off center and well, again, I think 99% of people won't notice that. It drove me crazy. It drove me crazy to see that. So if you have an A75 and you're watching this and now you notice that, I'm so, so sorry. But I hope that going forward that something happens with the, the CNCing and the machining where that just gets just gets pushed a little bit so it's perfectly centered and nice. All right, so if we can get past some of the aesthetic things going on here, because honestly, at that point, everything that I've, criticized the IE75 for has been very superficial to say the least. We can get to the most important feature of the amplifier, which is how it sounds. Now, my associated equipment with this was primarily my Dyn Audio Confidence 50s. I also have the Stark Beta 7, which is a $750 pair of bookshelf speakers, which I think is more reasonable to pair with a $1,500 power amplifier. I had the Esoteric K07X as the DAC, the LA4, preamp 
and also comparing to this was the SPL M1000 and the RSL IA255.1, which is $110. But we're, we're gonna come back to that a little bit later too, because there's, there's something more there. Me and Thomas have a very similar sound profile. We both very much like the sound that has that V curve. And I have to say that in my audiophile journey, and now that I have the, the Confidence 50s and I have the SPLs, I, I'm more kind of coming down on that V. I used to be, you know, really hard on the V. Now I could I could do a slight V. I might I might even be on that neutral gang, but I don't I I would say I still I still like that V curve. There's a funness to it. And I would say that the TSA 75 definitely has that in mind. It is a very V curve sounding amplifier. So if you like that V curve and you have a very neutral speaker and you want to introduce a little bit more fun to it, that is definitely a good direction. It brings a more forward presence into the treble, into the bass. It does recess the mids very slightly. So if you have a speaker that is very recessed in the mids or is very forward in the mids, this could either help you or hurt you. Or if you do like that more recessed feeling, this could be a huge boost. That's not to say that the vocal clarity or vocal presentation is not spot on, very lifelike with a detailed soundstage and great imaging. That's definitely not what I'm saying, but it definitely is a feel like taking a few seats back at the concert. However, I feel like it, determine, it depends on what kind of concert you're attending because if it is something more vocal that you're listening to, or if it's more electronic and bassy and more featured in those mids and those highs, then it might feel like you're taking a few seats forward. Pairing with the Stark Beta 7s, the Beta 7s at times can feel a little bit heavy in the treble on some tracks. So with the RSL IA255.1, I really enjoyed the ability to tune that amplifier with its built-in EQ on the treble side. Just turning it down ever so slightly made a huge difference. Now, the beauty of the RSL255.1, and again, this thing is $110, is that it actually does have a pre-out and the pre-out will engage the EQ. So I can bypass the amplifier stage of the RSL and use the TSA75 as my power amp. And with those EQs built into the 255, I can tune the A75 a little bit more towards neutral or enhance it in greater ways on that base bottom end or just trim a little bit off the top so that instead of that true V curve, I just have the one side of the V coming in on the bass side in case I wanna get a little bit more thump in the music. And going back to that point that I made earlier where this doesn't seem, it doesn't sound like a 75 watt amp because it's got so much kick and so much strength behind it, that is a big part of it too, is it does enhance that bass region, that bass presence. It brings it a little bit more forward. It puts it right in your face. Listening to something like On My Knees by Rufus DeSoul, you get that big, boom, 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 rave-like kind of pump in it. Listening to another song that's just like that, the Tataki by Argy, it's another one where it's a boom, 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 boom. And it's not so much focused on the vocals or the treble. There's definitely, of course, you know, drums and, and uh, treble built into it and synthetics and keyboards and things of that nature that are going to produce those frequencies, they're not the highlight of that music. It is more built for that bass portion when you do tune it down a little bit. So it does give you that nice pump and I loved that combination a lot. One of my gripes with the 255 was that it doesn't have enough strength behind it to really dig deep into those bass notes, but it does present it in a really nice way. Now, add the TSA 75. Now we're talking, we've got enough strength, we've got the muscle, we've got the force behind it to really bring out the best of those bass notes. And it's ever so sloped in a very nice way that we don't have to engage the EQ at all in order to get that really meaty, tight, powerful bass. Treble is really nice as well. Even stock using my main components that don't have any ability to do those EQs. Again, feeding it from the Esoteric K07X and to the LA4. There was definitely a good amount of treble presence and I felt like on the Confidence 50s, although not as resolute 
or spacious and airy as the SPL M1000s, the A75 did a very good job in producing those high frequency timbre that it really breathes a live-like presence to those hi-hats, those cymbals, and those upper frequencies that other amplifiers don't do as good a job on. I felt like spaciousness and air from the A75 was a great highlight. It had tremendous imaging capabilities, and I didn't feel like I was listening to a $1,500 amplifier when it came to that portion of it. I do think that that is the highlight here, getting that open and airy spaciousness, the 3D soundstage, and I know Thomas is a big fan of that, so I know he built that capability into this amplifier. Now, how he did it for $1,500, I'm not quite sure, but Thomas is the mastermind, and he knows how to make big, spacious, airy, orchestra-like sound, and by God, he did it here. It's no secret that this is a very colored sound profile coming from this amplifier. And for those out there who are seeking true neutrality, yeah, of course, this is not gonna be the amplifier for you. And if you have something that is a very bright speaker like a Bowers and Wilkins, this will only enhance that profile. And maybe you do want more of that, or maybe that's too much for you, then this probably isn't the amplifier for you. But I think those of you out there who have something from Sonus Faber, or even some of the more entry-level Dynaudio speakers could really benefit from a profile that the A75 presents. I think it is a very fun amp. It is a very engaging amp. It's a pleasure to listen to. It's built like a tank. The design quality, again, internally looks fantastic, better than amps costing four times the price in some instances. It's very meticulously and well thought out. There are some issues I have with some of the design aspects. Very, again, superfluous and aesthetic wise, but it's still a very good looking amplifier. And honestly, I didn't notice the issues that I do have with it on that note until listening to it for quite some time and actually staring it in the face while recording this and making all this B-roll footage and things like that for this video. I think that's gonna do it for me. I really like this amplifier. In fact, I like this amplifier so much that when I started listening to it, I had listened to about 30 minutes worth and I had to go to Thomas's site and check the, double check the price because I know Thomas had told me what it was earlier. I know it was somewhere in the thousands range. I thought it was 1800 or 1900 because I had to think that it was on the higher end of that register. And when I checked the price again on the website and saw it was 1500, I was like, holy smokes, this is a great performer. And I told Thomas, I was like, I have to tell you, like, this is awesome. I'm loving what I'm hearing so far. And my time with the A75 has been absolutely fantastic. So make sure you check it out. I'm excited to see more products from Thomas, including his next giant killer, the A20, which I've heard very good things about. So I'm hoping that's the next thing that I get from Thomas, but who knows? We'll see. There, on the box that I got from the A75, there is a checkbox for an A75 and an A75S, which I have to imagine stands for special edition. But on the Galleon website, that's nowhere to be found. So there might be a special edition with more enhanced features or something else. I don't know what else Thomas could put in this amplifier, to be honest, but there is something cooking, it looks like. So um, stay tuned, I'm excited for that. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, subscribe, it helps the channel grow, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.